Oh my god, you guys. We have a humongous unboxing. So, we're gonna get to it right after this. Alright boys and girls and we're back! Hello everyone! Boys and girls and creatures of the internet, welcome to my show. This is a giant unboxing of a lot of stuff. I went a bit crazy and went on a shopping spree a few weeks back and since I ordered most of it from abroad it's just recently got to me and ignore the fact that it looks like I'm about to melt because I am. The weather just turned here in Sweden from really cold, really dry weather to really warm, really damp weather and I'm just melting away. So this first box is, I think it is, from the Hut Group. And this one is an interesting story because they sent me this, if this is what I think it is, they sent me this from the US. And getting stuff from the US to Sweden is really freaking expensive because you have to pay, first of all you have to pay uh, the transportation from the US to Sweden, then when it comes to Sweden you have to pay, first of all you have to pay eight dollars just to get it handled by the Swedish post office, then you have to pay uh, another tax on top of that for the items that you bought. This one on the other hand has gone through a different company, uh, so it has actually already been paid. So thank you very much, the Hut Group, for considering that. So, oh, it is, it is the one I wanted. All right, so, as I said, I went a bit crazy and I went on a shopping spree a few weeks back when I still had some money. So I bought a ton of these. It's uh, the Fallout Mystery Minis. I love Mr. Minis. So I'm gonna put that stuff over there. And here, this one was a freebie that I got. It's one of my Deadpool adorbs. Isn't he cute? So adorable. I love that. That was a free gift, so I didn't have to pay for that. Sometimes they do that. They have free gifts if you buy things for a certain amount of money. And, oh, it's cool. And this. It's the piece de la resistance. It's back. And I am a huge fan of Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. And this is The Nightmare Before Christmas bag. And it's really gorgeous. Look, a little tiny white bag that I'm going to use this summer. Well, tiny. It's a normal handbag, I would say. We're going to open this up so we don't have to listen to all the crinkles. And here we go, we have an image of Jack and Sally over there. And it's, I think they made this because it's 25 years since uh, the launch of Nightmare Before Christmas. And there you have Jack and Sally over there on the, I don't know, hill thing. And here is the graveyard. And here we have Zero, the cutest dog ever. Dogs are always faithful, even after they died, apparently. And inside the bag, if there is anyone who likes bags as much as I do, uh, there is two side pockets and then there are one little pocket here for your phone and then middle pocket for other stuff. This one is where I use my, put my lady stuff, you know. Old girls knows what I'm talking about. You need somewhere to put them so they don't fall out of your bag when you pick up your purse. It's really embarrassing. Yeah, it's so cool. I love it. Uh, it's, and as I said, it was the 25 year anniversary bag. So that's that. I'm gonna put that up to the side. And then I just have two Mr. Minis, no, Pint Size Heroes Marvel Studios. There we go. Get rid of this one. Some packing materials. And I'm gonna open the box, don't worry. 
and I have a momo because I don't think anyone wants to see my fat arms but it's too warm to have a t-shirt on. Alright, so this one is an interesting one. This looks like pop in a box. Uh, boxes. Uh, it's But it's sent from uh, Germany. I don't know. It might be the rest of these because I ordered three of these, I think. So it might be one more, but it's not rattling that much. And it's not marked with the hot group or anything like they used to be, so let's check it out. <sighs> oh, that's interesting. I don't remember ordering this. All right. It's a mystery mini, but it's Nightmare Before Christmas. I don't remember ordering these, so that's cool. Let's put that over there. And I got another box for my Christmas boxes. I always keep these because they are th these boxes are really really sturdy and I keep them for packaging my Christmas gifts and birthday presents and stuff so I'm gonna keep that should we get into these now what do you say should we yeah let's do it so I'm gonna start with the pint size heroes and there are 12 of these and there are an equal chance of getting any one so let's see now this hmm i don't know let's open and see oh it's red skull it's my least favorite all right let's see put that away and then let's take the other one oh this is either Helia or Loki. I think it might be ant -Man. No! Oh, that's interesting. It was Doctor Strange. I was feeling this way. And I thought this was the head. So, Doctor Strange. Not my favorite Marvel Cars character, but he's cute. Especially in this version. Not too bad. Oh, he fell over. All right. So, should we do Fallout or Nightmare Before Christmas? I'm gonna go for this one. It's fairly light. I wonder... Here is everyone you can get. See? I wonder if this might be zero. It's very light. And zero is the smallest one. Oh, the glare. The glare. There is zero. Here's the smallest one. It might also be one of the kids. Uh, I don't. Re I, o I always forget who's who, but they are Lock, Shock, and Barrel, I think. So let's open this up. Uh, I need my scissors. And this is also the twenty-five years anniversary minis. Oh my god, twenty-five years! I remember when they launched it. I'm that old. Yeah, yeah, I guess you can see that my forehead has seen better days. And today it's really bad because it's so goddamn warm. So let's get into this one. And see what we got. Yeah, my guess is that this is zero. I would have won an Oogie Boogie. He's my favorite. It's... Uh, 1 in 12 chance to get any one of them, so that's cool. No, I got one of the kids that I don't remember the name, so I think I ordered more of these. Did I only order one? This feels weird. I think I ordered three or four. Oh well, that's him. And I can't remember. Lock, shock, or barrel. And he has no balance. I gotta need some pack his tape to get him down. I got a shelf where I keep them. Uh, one day I'm going to show you. All right, so Fallout. This one was really heavy. They are really heavy, both of them. I wonder if this might be uh, Fallout. There is one in 10, 12 chance of getting any of these. There we go. I already got uh, the Nuka Girl since before. And I I'm sure I ordered more than two. I usually I order three or five. It's an odd number. 
I usually don't order an even number like two. So that's strange. Right, let's get into this one then. It's really heavy, so my bad is that it's uh, the security drone droid. That one. It's, it's a large one. Yeah, it's him. I think it's him. Because this is really, really heavy. And it's really, really large. It actually nearly didn't fit in the box. Yeah, it is. Look how cool. Actually, this is a very well, well made mini. I had to say, the details are actually amazing. He's really, really good. Look at him. His back, side. He says, I can't turn my hand that way. And there's the other side and the front. I mean, he's really cool. This is some kind of oh, security droids, right? Uh, I don't know what they are called right now. Oh, that's good. I'm a huge Fallout fan, but I don't remember what they are called. All right, so. That's always, I mean, it was the same thing when we did our live stream and I forgot about the Cyberman. Yeah, brain parts. All right, let's see what this might be then. If this is another droid, I've got to be sad. I think it is. No? No? Yeah, it is. It's another droid. Damn it. How in the earth did I get two of the same? Yeah, it's another one. So, I have a pair. There's another one. Well, I guess they can guard the shelf together. Um, that's that. And this is the thing about Mr. Minis. Sometimes you get the same thing twice or three times or four times. But it's a bit ironic when it's a 1 in 10, 12 to get anyone and you get two of the same. Ah, oh well. That's it. I'm just going to open my door because he is so cute. And I mean, yeah, dorbs don't have any particular value, at least not right now. So I don't feel bad about opening the box. I mean, they never, I, I guess they never got really as popular as the Funko Pops because of those I'm really taking care of. So let's get to it. Um, I think I'm gonna throw away the box or two, so. <gasps> I'm bad. And here we go. A little, little, little dorb of venomized Deadpool. It's so cute. It's gonna sit on top of my shelf. There we go. And I would say if you have children who likes Funko Pops and these kinds of figures, these are better to start collecting than the Funko Pops because first of all these are cheaper and if the kids want to play with them then can you just pull them out play with them and they won't break they are really sturdy so and you don't have to worry about value so a tip Put that to the side and then we're gonna dig into this this is actually from now on, it's going to be books, so if you're not interested in books, you can turn this off and go down and tell me in the comments what you think about Mystery Minis and uh, fan merch in general. So, and if you guys have left that's not interested in books, I'm going to start opening these. And I love books. I collect books. I have always read a lot. I have studied literature on in the university. Uh, my main focus there was youth and uh, kids literature and I love fantasy books. I've also studied Nobel Prize winners on, uh, at university. So this first one is New Age books because as you probably know if you have watched my live streams I'm a Wiccan. Uh, which means that I'm not an evil, horrible witch that turns people to frogs. I just believe in a different set of gods than Christians do. And um, if you have any questions, please ask me. I'm going to answer you. As long as you're polite, I'm going to answer you. So don't worry. Uh, these books uh, are 
uh, new age books it's not particularly wiccan books one of them are but not the other one so let's open them up no it's not i forgot what which books i got it's and these books are in swedish so this is the source uh Kjellan in swedish uh it's uh, uh written by ursula james and this book is uh, actually uh, also available in English and I guess in a lot of other sources uh, languages. Uh, it's, um, it's about a lot of prophecies and stuff. I have always I have been looking at this book for quite a while so I'm gonna read it and I'll, maybe I'll tell you about it. You can tell me in the comments if you want me to talk about these types of books. I'm gonna do a series called Book Geek where I'm going to talk about uh, geeky books uh, in, uh, and source books and stuff like that. Man manga, uh, comics and stuff like that. But if you want me to talk about these kinds of books, I might do a section about that too. So please tell me if you want to. This one, this one I actually have wanted for quite some time. And finally, I decided to get it. It's a book called Alchemy. It's uh, actually about real alchemy. Yes, you were thinking it right. Uh, and this is from the Rosenkreutz Society, which is the same like uh, they are the opposite to Golden Dawn. And now it's the Crowley. And this is actually about... Uh, alchemy isn't about turning lead to gold. It's about turning your consciousness. So I'm going to read this and i um, Maybe I'll throw it out the window because I'm not really a fan of ritual magic. But well, we'll see. Maybe it's good. I'm just gonna see if there is a first. No, it's written in 2018. There isn't. Uh, it, it has its sources in the, the 1500s. And it's, it's a collection about alchemy in different time periods. So it's going to be interesting. I don't think this is available in English uh, because it's written by uh, two Swedish Rosenkreutz uh, members and it's printed by uh, the Alchemy Academy Academia of Sweden. So I don't think this is available in any other language, but who knows, maybe. And here is just that. And we're gonna throw that away in the corner over there. And then we're gonna open this one. This is from a store called Ad Libris. Uh, uh, it's a Swedish bookstore. Well, it's a Scandinavian bookstore. Uh, they have almost everything. If you look at the box, you can see all these little squares. Uh, you have the red one says Ad Libris, and the other says a lot of other stuff. They own a lot of stuff. It's a bit like. Uh, I would say Amazon, but it's not small stores that are just collected in one place. It's just one humongous store that sells almost anything, uh, except clothing, I think. I haven't found any clothes there. So let's get into this. These books, uh, I'm just going to show you the books today. We're going to take a little quick look at them because I'm curious. And we're going to do... I'm gonna review them for you. We're gonna do a real look through them uh, at another time uh, because I, I have to sort them in a different... Uh, I'm gonna do them in my book geek section and I'm gonna sort them according to writer and subject. But let's get into it. Ah, bubble wrap. Tons of bubble wrap. I'm gonna destroy these. If you're afraid of scissors, Close your eyes. I used to work as a nurse and when we got medicine, they were, there were a ton of this stuff. So just learn how to dispose of it as quickly as possible because I hate it. So, let's dig in. First of all, we have G.R.R. Tolkien, The Silmarillion. And this is in English because I read in English just as well as in Swedish. 
so I do have a lot of English books, but this is also available in Swedish if you want to read it that way. This is uh, the origin story about uh, the Middle Earth, uh, Tolkien's, the, the world that Tolkien created for Lord of the Rings. He did a lot of more work than just Lord of the Rings and the Hobbits. So if you're a fan of Tolkien, uh, I would recommend even though this book it's fairly tedious. I already read it once as uh, a teenager and uh, well, mm. but I wanted it. I collect books, so I want to collect uh, Tolkien's books and this is one of them. So I'm going to check how it looks underneath the dust covers. Maybe this is better. What do you think? I mean, this isn't a collector's edition or anything. It's, I mean, it's even the second edition of Silmarillion. So I think this is going to be a movie, right? Right? Isn't they going to do a Silmarillion movie? I think I heard about it. I don't know. All right, let's get rid of that one and continue digging. Oh, here we have the great tales of Middle Earth. These are another set of Tolkien's books. Uh, it's uh, The Children of Hurin, uh, Beren and Luthien, and The Fall of Gondolin. Uh, these three books uh, are also of Tolkien and they are, they play out way before The Lord of the Rings. So I bought this as a set because it's cheaper than buying them one by one, but you can buy them all one by one if you like. Uh, I don't think they are available in Swedish. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe they are. I think at least uh, The Children of Hurin is available in Swedish. It's called Hurin's Barn. And I also think Beren and Luthrian is available in Swedish, but I'm not sure. So maybe, maybe not. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to put it. It's, I'm running out of space here. So put these to the side because this one is something I've been really thrilled about. It's the Atlas of Tolkien's Middle-earth. As I said, I'm a huge fan of Lord of the Rings and Tolkien and his work. Uh, he was a brilliant man he, who did amazing stuff. Uh, I mean, he's, he is like the grandfather of modern uh, fantasy, so yeah, and an English professor. I mean, it's it's really, I'm not, I said I won't show you that much, but I'm going to show you there are some sketches that he did and some writing about the places. I saw there was something about Bag Inn, I'm going to show you. If I find it again, I just, uh, I just flipped past it. So here is Lake Town, if you remember from... Um, Desolate of Smaug, I think. It's the map of Lake Town. So, yeah. This is going to be interesting to read and flip through and look at the maps and stuff of the places that we all know and love. So, leaving Tolkien, we're going to go to another, another author that I really love and who died way too soon. Unfortunately, he, this is, of course, the one and only Terry Pratchett. And I actually have owned these books in Swedish uh, in Pocket, uh, Softback, I think it's called in English. Uh, this is the first book of uh, Discworld. It's, uh, is it? No. No, it's not. Sorry. This is the first book. It's The Color of Magic uh, by Terry Pratchett. Uh, and it's the first book about this world, if you're not thinking about uh, the We People books. And this is the book where we meet Rincewind and Two Flower. And I'm going to read this too. I have read it in Swedish. Uh, it's called uh, The Magin's Fairy in Swedish. Uh, and it's really amazing. The these these books with this design. This is not the original design by Paul Kirby. Uh, this is a new one. It's called 
the Discworld, the Unseen University Collection, and this is special hardback books. So I got this one, and then of course I got Light Fantastic, the first one I showed you that I didn't think about, that it's the second book. And it's also Discworld, the Unseen University Collection. Uh, this is, I don't know if these are some kind of university, uh, university. <laughs> anniversary books. Um, because there are a lot of these. The, you have the Unseen University Collection and then you have the Witches Collection, which is uh, the next book in the series, Equal Rights and Sorcery uh, and all of those. So, yeah. That's that. And I'm gonna read these and I'm gonna do I'm gonna talk about these books in a later book geek, book geek episode where I'm gonna talk about these books and if they are good for young adults and children or if you should keep them to yourself. So if you made it all the way through this video or this giant unboxing video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like and a comment down below and I'll see you guys later. And now I'm gonna hit the shower because I'm melting. So see you all. Have it. Have a good one. Bye bye.